maybe we could get to um, three three texts that have kind of shaped all of the ministry um, for for you. Three books that you've written: uh, Desiring God, The Pleasures of God, and Future Grace. Um, it's been 26 years now. Is that right? That since Desiring God was published. Yeah, that is it. Yeah, 86. Yeah, 26 years since Desiring. What has God wrought in the world that's far abundantly more than you could ever ask or imagine? You know, when you, I'm sure you prayed similar prayers as you were writing and thinking, and God, do something here. Now you step back 26 years later and you look at what has come about since the publishing of that book. I just, I cannot believe God's done this. This is just, I, I, I am staggered. I don't know the correlation between Desiring God, the book, and The Young Restless Reform. Right. I, I can't draw any lines of causality there. Right. All I know is I dropped that pebble in the pond, and uh, it's part of the pebbles. Yeah. It's, it's part of the ripples that are going out. I, I don't have any measurements, I don't have any statistics as to um, how influential it's been. So everything I know and feel is anecdotal. Yeah. Yeah. And what, what I feel, let's t t tell you my sense, is that um, in 1988, two years after the publication, we, we started a conference called the Bethlehem Conference for Pastors mm -hmm. built on the doctrines of grace. And there were only two or three others in the country that I knew of. There was the founders, and, and there was the Banner of Truth, and MacArthur, who hasn't didn't declare himself very much Calvinistic in those days, but since then has become more explicitly Reformed. In, in, he didn't change, he's just more vocal. A few others like that. And, and so I felt I need to do this today. Yeah. It's conferences everywhere. are everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I, we don't need to do our conferences anymore. We just do them because they're a cluster of you know people who get help from them. But but as far as pushing something forward in a movement, we 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 didn't need to do that. So that's that's happening. And my sense is that my my contribution to this as one of the older guys in it is Christian hedonism. Yeah. Christian hedonism. Uh, puts a happy flavor on what is often stereotyped as a dour yeah. and unhappy theology. Grim. Yeah, pretty, pretty grim. And um, here's Piper uh, with his antics of joy in the pulpit and his exuberance over God's supremacy and his writing book after book on God's thrill in being God so that we should join in being thrilled in God and all the doctrines of grace feeding that joyful supremacy and it has it has uh, put in the mix yeah. along with all the others put in the mix a flavor that I think has helped the movement uh, gain traction yeah. I mean there have always been little pockets of reform people but they've not gained much traction because, for whatever reason, they haven't felt winsome. They haven't drawn, you know, they've they pushed people out. You don't believe that? You don't believe that? You don't believe that? Yeah, that yeah, we do. It's about the boundaries. Yeah. yeah. Whereas, if you exult in God because of this, and, and there's this strange and wonderful truth that God is most glorified in you when you are most satisfied in Him, which is the thesis of desiring God, then people say, I've never, I've never heard that. Yeah. That's weird. Is that biblical? Is that, if that were true, that would be the best thing in the world, that my pursuit of happiness and God's pursuit of His own glory are not at odds. They, they in fact come true together? That could be true. If that could be true, then I could embrace, em em embrace the, the biggest God imaginable because my joy would soar in that. So I think I think that's my pebble that I've just dropped that Christian hedonism pebble into the pond, and and the ripple effects have been more tasty. Therefore, they've been more attractive and more winsome. The sense that I get is that it put Jesus at the center. It it it, it gave it gave um, contours and, and clarity 
to the person of Jesus, yeah. and, and that and that dovetails yeah. into pl the pleasures of God. Yeah. The the Father's yeah. delight and the Son is our yeah, delight yeah, in the Son. Yeah, yeah. And let, let me say how I see what you just said. Um, one of the I think most unusual things I have done theologically is to define saving faith affectionately. Yeah. Yeah. not notionally or rationally or decisionistically. And what I mean is, I have taken John 6.35, I am the bread of life, whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. I put coming and believing in parallel, and uh, not thirsting and not hungering in parallel, and define believing as a coming to Christ for soul satisfaction. Now that puts the beauty of Christ at the center of saving faith. Not just the work of Christ. Yeah. He didn't just save me from hell, and He didn't just become a good boss called Lord. He became my treasure. Yeah. So I say, you know, traditionally we've said, do you believe in Jesus as your Savior and Lord? That's yeah. And I'm adding every time, do you believe in Jesus as your Savior? You need Him for that. Is He your Lord? You need Him for that. And is He your supreme treasure? And what that does is force people to fish or cut bait. Because yeah. you can yeah. say yes to Lordship and yes to Saviorhood and not like Him very much. Yes, that's exactly right. And what I've said is you're not saved if you don't like Jesus. Yeah. You're not saved if Jesus is not the treasure hidden in a field which you saw. Oh, I'll go sell anything to buy this field. And so faith is a being satisfied with all that God is for us. And if you define faith that way, Jesus comes to the center, but He comes to the center as precious. He doesn't just come to the center as did a great work, or is, is very powerful. But all that He did and all that He is makes Him gloriously beautiful, gloriously satisfying, the person you would want to be with forever. So I'm glad you said what you said, because that's, that's one of the effects, I think, of getting at faith the way I've tried to.